We're here to do something rather impudent. We intend to challenge a decision rendered by a large number of Leonardo da Vinci specialists. They claim that this is an authentic work of the master. But we have another version of this work in mind, one which we think has an equal claim to authenticity, even though it has been seriously damaged and contains passages by another hand. It has been known for centuries that Leonardo painted a Salvator Mundi that is, a picture of Christ in a frontal pose, his right hand raised in a Benedicto gesture, while holding a globe in his left hand. Many great artists created similar works. Hans Memling, Roger van der Weyden, and Albrecht Dürer. But Leonardo da Vinci's image was the one most often copied, though his original work was, until recently, thought to be no longer extant. He probably created his painting between 1510 and 1515, when he was in Milan, but in the employ of the King of France, Louis XII. This picture, now thought to be an authentic work by Leonardo, was once called the Coq version. For clarity's sake, we'll use that name here. Until recently, it was considered a poor copy of the original. Its provenance is somewhat mysterious. We call it the Cook, because in 1900, it was purchased by Sir Francis Cook. This rather horrible photo, taken circa 1908, is the only currently available photograph of the image before restoration. In 1913, experts labeled the painting a copy of a copy by Boltraffio, Leonardo's student. In 1958 it was sold to someone calling himself Kuntz for £45. The low price has become part of the lore of this work. Kuntz represented an American who has never been publicly named. In 2005, that person's family sold it again. The new owners handed it to conservator Diane Y. Modestini, who removed layers of clumsy overpainting and varnish. The main investigator has been dealer and art historian Robert Simon, who is said to have a financial interest in the picture. The official owner now is Quote, an entity known as R.W. Chandler. That's the name of a consortium headed by Simon. So where was the cook before 1900? Simon claims that it there is a record of it being in the collection of England's King Charles I in 1649. That turned out to be a rather significant year in the king's life, for other reasons. The new owners of the painting, sold it back to Charles II, when the monarchy was restored. Then it ended up with the Duke of Buckingham, whose heir put it up for auction in 1763. After that, the trail is lost. So we have two huge lacunae in the history of this painting. We have at least a 136 year gap between 1513 and 1649. And we have a 137 year gap between 1763 and 1900. Previously, this picture known as the Degane version was considered the likeliest to be authentic. It was the subject of this book by Renaissance scholar Joanne Snowsmith. It also was favored by Leonardo scholar Ludwig Haydenreich. In 1972, the Louvre subjected the Degane to scientific study, and found no technical reason to exclude attribution to Leonardo da Vinci. The advocates of this painting claim that its history can be reliably traced back to Anne of Brittany, the wife of Louis XII, Leonardo's great patron. And died in January of 1514, and it is said that she bequeathed this salvator Mundi to the Order of St. Clair. It hung in a convent school in Mount Aise, run by the Order. That convent was founded by Anne's family. The best known pupil of the school was Louisa Johnson, who married John Quincy Adams. She must have seen this painting. The convent was dissolved in the 19th century, at which time, it is said, this painting was sold to the Baron de Laurenti. He was a French royalist best known for getting into a duo with the infamous General Boulanger. They both survived. In 1902, Lorraine de sold it to the Comtesse de Behag famous for her incredibly elaborate parties. In 1939, she left the painting to her relative, the Marquis Hubert de Ganet. And so it fell into the possession of the aristocratic de Ganet family, best known for their beautiful Renaissance water park on the outskirts of Paris. 
The Degane family apparently sold the work to an unknown buyer at a Sotheby's auction in 1999. Although much of this timeline needs to be verified, at least there are no gaps. News accounts and recent BBC documentary have asserted that the cook has been authenticated. The experts involved are quite formidable. Foremost, of course, is Robert Simon. Other scholars include Carmen C. Bambach of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Peter Omarani, co-director of The Last Supper Restoration, and Martin Kemp of Oxford University. According to Simon's press statement, the painting was authenticated based on these criteria. 1. The quality of execution. 2. The existence of pentimenti, or small changes. 3. The resemblance to a 1650 etching of Leonardo's Salvator Mundi by Wenceslaus Holler. 4. The resemblance to these preliminary drawings indisputably produced by Leonardo da Vinci. We will deal with all of these points. For now, we would ask you to note one aspect of Leonardo's drawing which these experts don't mention. This odd fold in the fabric. Hidden Reach called it the Omega Fold. He believed that Leonardo deliberately made it look like the Greek letter Omega for symbolic reasons. We don't really see the Omega Fold in the cook. We do see it clearly in the Degane version. The inescapable conclusion. Whoever painted the Degane was not simply copying the cook. The creator of this painting must have had access to this drawing. If this is a mere copy, why does it reflect the artist's drawing better than the cook does? In the Degane and in the drawing, the Omega fold and the surrounding material bulge slightly over the leather crossband in a convincing fashion. That's not what we see here in the cook. Not only is the Omega fold almost eradicated, the leather band looks like it has had a section cut out with an exacto knife. This is downright bizarre. It looks like someone executed this section of the painting without understanding what the artist intended in, in the original drawing. But how could such a thing have happened if the same artist did both this drawing and this painting? If we turn to the face, we see that the center of the nose does not match the center of the mouth, the center of the chin, or the central point between the eyes. Artists are taught that the sides of the nostrils usually line up with the corners of the eyes. That's not what's happening here. The nose has a knot curve. It's as though Leonardo used Stephen Fry as a model. On the Degane, the nose curves the other way. As we all see, that's a telling detail. On the cook, the eyes don't align. The eye on the left is higher. Did Leonardo paint these eyes? In 2012, Martin Kemp appeared in a documentary about the Bella Principessa, which was recently ascribed to Leonardo. This is enormously magnified. You can see these little tiny uh, marks, which must almost be done uh, with a one hair brush or something like that. And the, the lower lid, I mean, just look at that. There's two, two little lashes there. We find no such details here. The modeling seems poor. Here's the Degane. Look at the subtle upper and lower eyelashes. Note the very subtle shading where the lower eyelid meets the eye. You can see the very carefully executed highlight on the lower lid. Then there's the lacrimal caruncle that's the pink bit in the corner of the eye. This is what we expect from a skilled observer of anatomy. Compare the cock to these eyes in the Annunciation. And this face is quite a bit smaller than the face of the Salvator Mundi. Here are other eyes by Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo understood that the eye is not flat. The eye is a sphere set within a socket, with flesh draped over it. Which eyes look most like the work of Leonardo da Vinci? We do feel that Leonardo had a hand in the cook, literally. It's hard to believe that anyone other than Leonardo painted this hand and sleeve. By contrast, the hand in the Degane displays somewhat less delicate modeling. Was this section painted by a student? Perhaps. Or perhaps Leonardo did not quite complete this version of the painting. Compare the Degane to the portrait of a young musician, widely, though not universally, thought to be painted by Leonardo circa 1490. The body is unfinished, as is the hand. 
Looking elsewhere on the Degane, note the execution of the cross straps and the orphrey, with their intricate geometrical designs. Each incision in the leather has its own highlight. The knotwork certainly seems Leonardo esque. The threads even have individual highlights. Compared to these drawings by Leonardo, the cook also features excellent leather work and knots. The match is almost exact. How can this be? We have to understand something about how a picture like this was created. Leonardo took a panel sheet and covered it with gesso. Traditional gesso was a combination of rabbit skin glue and a fine white powder like marble dust. Applied in many layers, with much sanding in between, until everything is eggshell smooth. The process is difficult. Then the artist had to get his drawing, or cartoon, onto the panel, while keeping the delicate surface clean and smudge free. Renaissance artists use two transfer methods. 1. In the Spolvero technique, they poked hundreds of small holes into the drawing, then rubbed it with charcoal or pigment. 2. The Coco technique involved rubbing the back of the paper with charcoal, so it could be used like carbon paper. Sometimes they used oil, to make the paper transparent. Now that we understand how the panels were produced, we can establish definitively, that the Cook and the Degane are related. They came from the same preparatory drawing, or cartoon. How do we know this? If we use computer imaging, to overlay one painting atop the other, we find that all of the major elements match up exactly. Even the intricate scroll work on the leather bands is the same. If we look at the right hand, we see the fingers are in the same place, but the knuckles have been raised. Obviously, this was done, because the cook was painted on a somewhat smaller panel. The artist needed to get the hand into the frame. The only major portion which does not match up is the face. We'll get to that soon. These two paintings have relationship to each other. We cannot simply say that one was a mere copy of the other. If you declare the cook to be authentic then you are also saying something profoundly important about the Degane. The image area of the Degane extends beyond the image area of the cook. We shall soon present evidence that the larger composition reflects Leonardo's original intent. This additional material may indicate that the Degane came first. Why would any artist create an oversized cartoon for an undersized panel? Let's get back to the mismatched face. The National Gallery of London argues that Leonardo used multiple cartoons for its version of the Madonna of the Rocks. In that painting, the faces appear to have been prepared separately from the figures. It has been said, that Leonardo never really finished the face of Christ in the Last Supper. There was something ineffable that he wanted to capture. We think that he drew the Salvator Mundi's face on a separate sheet of paper. This allowed him to make as many drawings as necessary to get it right. As noted earlier, the left eye is higher in the cook. In the Degane version, the right eye is higher. The difference is subtle, but it's definitely there. The nose is curved in the opposite direction. Conclusion. The same cartoon was used for both. When the cook was produced, the artist for whatever reason reversed the preparatory drawing. Since the light is coming from the left, the painter of the cook had to adjust the shading accordingly. In our opinion, the misalignment of the eyes seems more obvious on the cook, perhaps because the face was left unfinished. Or perhaps this part of the painting was completed by a student. Here we can see quite clearly, I think, that there is a first idea for the thumb. Oh, yes. So it was more upright? It was more upright. But this was the moment that gave us a clue 
and uh, gave us some hope, which wouldn't have entered our minds uh, previously, that we might be dealing with the lost original. Pentimenti are often seen in paintings by Caravaggio, who would compose in paint right on the canvas. But there's nothing improvisational about Artu Salvatum Mundus. Both derive from the same detailed cartoons. Simon argues that the Pentimenti indicates that the cook is the original, the prime version. But that is not necessarily the case. Infrared study of the London version of Leonardo's Madonna of the Rocks has uncovered Pentimenti. Yet most art historians believe that the London version was painted after the version in the Louvre. Both versions of the Madonna of the Young Winder display Pentimenti. They cannot both be the first. There are two versions of Titian's Venus and the Lute Player. One is owned by the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which argues that both paintings were generated from a single tracing, and that small changes in Pentimenti do not necessarily signify priority or the superiority of one version over the other. The controversial De Bracci Stondo, which may or may not be by Raffle, is a partial copy of the Sistine Madonna, which is indisputably by Raffle. Although the Tondo is a copy, it displays a number of Pentimenti. The De Bracci Trust website says that, quote, Pentimenti cannot be considered as indubitable proof of originality. If Pentimenti were found to exist in these copies after Leonardo, would the copy suddenly become the original? It is possible that the artist of the cook version simply experimented with a change in the position of the thumb. A minor change of this sort does not, in and of itself, prove originality. When Cecilus Hollow made his etching in 1650, allegedly from Leonardo's original, the obvious question, which painting was he looking at the cook, the de Gane, or some other? According to Simon, the cook version was in King Charles I's collection in 1649. The painting was sold soon after. Hollow was close to Charles I, and even closer to his widow, Henrietta Maria de Medici, after whom the state of Maryland was named. She was in France during much of the English Civil War. No one is sure where Hollow was in 1650, Joanne Snowsmith found evidence that he accompanied the Queen, now the Queen Mother, during her French exile. As if the poor woman's life were not complicated enough already, there was also a war going on in France at this time, the War of the Front. Because of all the violence around her, the Queen Mother found it advisable to retire to various convents. Joanne Snowsmith believes that one of those convents was the Sisters of St. Clair in Aunt A's, where this image was on display. So Holler could have had access to either the cook or the de Gane. The Winceslas Holler etching resembles all of the copies in general terms, yet does not match any of them in all their details. Like the cook, the etching does not have the omega fold. Like the de Gane, Holler shows facial hair. We also see facial hair in the copy in the Detroit Institute of the Arts, and in this version in a private collection in Zurich and in this version formerly in the Vittadini collection, present whereabouts unknown. The Worsi version, known only from this photograph, deserves special attention. Unlike any other version, the aspect ratio matches that of the holler etching. The sleeve is buttoned, as in this drawing by Leonardo, a feature not seen in other versions. Although the drapery seems crude, the face was carefully executed and obviously derives from Leonardo's original cartoon. Whoever painted this had access to materials in the master's studio. This work's present whereabouts are unknown. Recall what the cook once looked like. If the worsi turns up again, who knows what a restoration might reveal. Here are four versions which do lack facial hair. This one, formerly of the Trivazio collection. This one by Cesare da Sesto, in the National Museum of Warsaw. This rediscovered copy in the church of San Domenico Maggiore, in Naples, and a copy attributed to a follower of Bernardino Luini. About half the copies have beards and half do not. This fact may indicate that not one but two originals inspired the copyists. Even if it could be proved that Hollow worked from the beardless cook, we should not presume that the cook was the first version produced by Leonardo's studio.
The tests done by Diane Y. Modestini indicate that the cook was done in a fashion consistent with Leonardo's technique. However, in 1972 Madeleine Hours, director of the laboratory of the Louvre Museum, conducted tests on the Degane which came to the same conclusion about this painting. Another painting under her care, the St. John, used the exact same kind of high-quality walnut panel as the Degane Salvator Mundi. By contrast, the cook was painted on a rather carelessly chosen panel. Oh, a knot in the wood. The knot, there was a oh, knot I in the see. wood. The wood had this defect. The Degane has not been restored, so we don't know what it originally looked like. An unusually glossy varnish helped to preserve the original brilliant colors. The black background was certainly added by another hand. The light blue mantle over the left shoulder is a clumsy overpainting. There was once a cross over the orb. That cross not part of the original painting. Later still, it was badly covered up by the house painter who slapped on this coat of blue paint. We can see red through the glass. If the mantle was originally red, the painting would have looked something like this. We would like to offer a tentative theory. Just as there are two versions of the Madonna of the Rocks, and two versions of the Madonna of the Spindle, Leonardo wanted there to be two versions of the Salvator Mundi. He did this one first, not quite finishing some sections. When he began work on his second version of the Salvator Mundi, the hand was the first thing to be painted, but he left much of the painting incomplete. Later, it was finished by a very gifted student or follower of Leonardo probably after his death. The student did not have access to his drawings. The student tried to divine the master's intent as best he could, but errors occurred. This may be just a theory, but it has the virtue of covering all the currently available evidence. A simplistic attribution of this one panel, and no other, to Leonardo da Vinci does not cover all the facts. We are well aware that well-meaning individuals have made dubious claims about Leonardo's use of geometry. Our work is different. What we are about to show you is simple, elegant, sensible and provable. Leonardo learned the basics of geometry under Verrocchio. His interest deepened when he collaborated with the mathematician Fra Luca Pacioli. Leonardo provided the illustrations for Pacioli's De Divina Proportion. Although Leonardo investigated many different geometrical constructions, he was particularly fascinated with the octagon. In his study, geometer Mark Reynolds notes that it is obvious to anyone spending time looking through Leonardo's sketchbooks that he drew octagons and octagonal systems almost obsessively throughout his long artistic career. In rapid sketches, and in considered drawings, from floor plans to mechanical devices, we find octagonal shapes taking precedence over other geometric systems. As we will soon see, there is clear and indisputable octagonal geometry embedded in the Degane version of the Salvator Mundi. But before we get to that, we must understand a few basics. 